cornerback Willie Brown started his storied career with the New England Patriots. He intercepted an NFL record four passes in a single game during his second season. But none were more historic than the one he picked off in Super Bowl XI. And he looks and throws. Intercepted by the Oakland Raiders. Willie Brown at the 30, 40, 50. He's going all the way. Old man Willie. Touchdown Raiders. Critics said he was too small, too slow, and not strong enough to play in the NFL. But when Fred Bolitnikoff caught seven passes for 118 yards in his first NFL start, the critics were nowhere to be found. Deceptive speed and some of the best hands in football helped this underdog succeed in a big man's game. Super Bowl XI was number 25's shining moment when he earned Super Bowl MVP honors. Fred Bolitnikoff's 589 receptions and 76 touchdowns are not just great stats. They are a testament to a man who refused to be denied. This... It began in the autumn of 1977 in Denver, Colorado. It was a fever that raged throughout the Rocky Mountains, leaving all of its victims colored a resplendent orange. They called it Broncomania. After 18 years, the loyal, long-suffering fans of the Denver Broncos finally had something to cheer about. The fans respond. Listen to this crowd. The Broncos on the field. It is over. The miracle has happened. The Broncos are going to the Super Bowl. In contrast to the spirit and exuberance of Coach Red Miller and his surprising Broncos was the business-like efficiency of Coach Tom Landry and the cool Cowboys of Dallas. Not bad, Scotty, not bad. In 1977, Landry directed the Cowboys to their fourth Super Bowl, and they approached the trip to New Orleans with the relaxed attitude of a team that is accustomed to winning. I'm, I'm looking forward to going down there and eating some oysters and shrimp, gumbo. Take it easy for a couple days. I'm Dallas gonna... earned their berth in the Super Bowl with a daring and deceptive offense that rolled up more yards and scored more touchdowns than any team in football. Their hard-charging defense led the National Conference in quarterback sacks and was so devastating in its execution that it became known as the Doomsday Machine. Matched against this savage skill and strength would be the heart and hustle of the Denver Broncos, who left for New Orleans, hoping to fulfill the prophecy of their frenzied fans with a victory in the Superdome.
lesson now. Four quarters, 60 minutes, and we're the champion. Yeah, let's go, baby! Stay tuned for more film session on the NFL Network. Behind Roger Staubach. Now, here's the handoff and a reverse. The fumble in the backfield. Stickers right from the very first play, Super Bowl XII was a coach's nightmare. And Butch Johnson dropped the handoff. It was fiercely fought, but frightfully flawed. Jackson they've got Staubach. Fumble! Denver has it. No, there's no official indication yet. Hold it. The Denver players say they have it. Dallas got it. Dallas got it. The game set Super Bowl records for the most fumbles, most turnovers, and most penalties. It lacked structure and style, but not intensity. And they may call face mask. And the Cowboys are really going to protest because Charlie Waters was clearly being held by the man blocking him. But I think Charlie also grabbed the face mask of the blocker. And Tom Rafferty's getting into it with somebody. Hey, 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 56, you can't do that. Hey, get that guy out of there. You can't do that. Gonna rip his legs off. Rip him up bad. Here's the handoff. Goes to Bob Dole. Right, Craig still has it and wants it all. Going deeper. Haven Moses, he's open. And now he's out of center. Left side, fires deep for Dupree at the 10. Billy Joe fumbles the ball. It is recovered down at the 15 yard line by the Broncos. And now the Mobile, what an emotional game. Now it's swinging back the other way. Morton's play action, back to pass. Fires it out and intercepted again. Mark Washington to the 40, to the 50. I'll tell you why that ball was intercepted, because Ed Jones was all over Craig Morton like ugly on an ape, as they used to say when I was in school. The interceptions and fumbles punctuated a drama dominated by two outstanding defenses. Different in design, but equal in effect. Denver's emotional orange crush defense buried the Cowboys under an angry avalanche of swarming defenders. While the orange crush performed as a group, Dallas's doomsday defense was a series of splendid solos. Number 54, defensive tackle, Randy White. Defensive end, number 72, Ed Jones. Defensive end, Harvey Martin, number 79. While Dallas went after Craig Morton with its front four, Denver used its linebackers to lead the assault on Roger Starbuck. The Bronco linebackers disrupted the Dallas offense with a daring variety of blitzes, and Starbuck was sacked four times in the first half. But in one respect, Denver's play was as disappointing as it was successful. All season long, their defense had won games by capitalizing on opponents' mistakes. But today, Denver let each opportunity slip through its grasp. The Cowboys fumbled three times in the first five minutes, and Denver failed to make a single recovery. This one simple fact tipped the balance of the game in the Cowboys' favor. Their defense made the big plays that Denver's did not. Four times in the first half, the doomsday defense intercepted Craig Morton.
Denver's offense passed out gifts like a department store Santa Claus. And the hustling cowboys gleefully scooped up the goodies. Dallas's offense managed to convert three of the turnovers into scores. Two of them resulted in field goals. And after one interception, the Cowboys gained possession of the ball on the Denver 25. And from there, Tony Dorsett, number 33, led them to the first touchdown of the game. of a bizarre and brutal first half, Dallas led 13 to nothing. At the beginning of the second half, Jim Turner kicked a 43-yard field goal for Denver's first score of the game. Despite the offensive disasters of the first half, the Broncos were only 10 points behind, and their Here's spirit up. got an added boost time, when it seemed as if Dallas would continue to have trouble line. holding on to the ball. Fumbles the ball, picks it up, nailed as he gets to the 21-yard line. Second fumble for Butch today. It's not starting off as Butch Johnson's day, exactly. Fumbling that kickoff, fumbling the double reverse handoff on the Cowboys' first offensive play of the day. Okay, everybody ready? Let's go. Cowboys get it for the first time in the third quarter. They've Red got right. it in their own Power 49 near Geo. It's on two. It's on two. Ready? Break. <laughs> Johnson's fumble was just an unpleasant reminder of the chaotic first half. And it was soon forgotten as all the parts of Tom Landry's intricate offense began to function in their prescribed pattern. in the third quarter, Landry used his running backs as primary passing targets. When Denver's linebackers finally closed down on this maneuver, Landry then instructed Staubach to use the running backs as blockers instead of receivers. The running backs cut down the rush of Denver's troublesome linebackers, and for the first time in the game, Starbuck had time to locate late opening receivers downfield. The Cowboys fast action shotgun blasted open holes in Denver's defense, then demolished it with one booming bullseye. A three-man rush again. Roger goes deep across the middle. Way downfield. And Bush Johnson caught. Touchdown! A sensational diving catch by Bush Johnson, the Cowboys. 
second year wide receiver. Take back everything we said about Butch not having a big day. He's fumbled it a couple times, but I'll tell you what, people talk about the greatest catch ever in a Super Bowl, and they talk about something that Lynn Swan made against Dallas two years ago. Butch diving, he caught that ball parallel to the ground at about the three yard line. It was a sensational catch by Johnson. The touchdown was a spectacular play that Denver seemed prepared for, but still couldn't stop. It was third and ten. Denver was expecting a pass, but there is no adequate defense for the catch that Butch Johnson made. The Broncos trail by 17 points, and they seem to be treading water, too buoyant with spirit and defense to sink, but too empty of offense to move. Just as it seemed as if they might drown, the sea parted, and through it came number 80, Rick Upchurch. Desperate for some offense, Red Miller replaced the battered Craig Morton with Norris Weiss, number 14, a younger and more mobile quarterback. inspired the Denver offense, and they fought to their first touchdown, a three-yard plunge by rookie Rob Lytle. A streetcar named Desire once ran here in New Orleans, and it suddenly seemed as if the Broncos' offense had found it. Now, if it could only carry them to a few more scores, their world championship dreams would come true. Stay tuned for more film session on the NFL Network. As the fourth period began, Denver's determined offense still needed more restoration work from Norris Weiss. What it got instead was a demolition job from the doomsday defense. same fierce pass rush that had destroyed Craig Morton was now supplemented with an occasional blitzing linebacker and Weiss fell into desperate trouble. Weiss five yards back has the snap. Here comes the rush. He's up in the pocket. He is there, he fumbled the ball. There's a chase for it, and the Cowboys have recovered. Dallas has the ball at the 30-yard line. That is the eighth turnover by the Denver Broncos this afternoon. A 
Another decisive move by the doomsday defense had opened the last door to the most treasured victory in football. I don't know why, uh, Vern, but I just have the feeling that uh, Tom Landry might have a gadget that he might want to use in a situation like this somewhere here, one of those trick plays. Blue hot, hot! Pitch out, Newhouse goes left, pulls up, wants to pass. Fires it deep for goalie Richards. Robert Newhouse's touchdown pass not only settled the game, but offered a useful lesson in the Dallas style of winning. The touchdown play did not really catch Denver by surprise. Golden Richards was properly covered. It was simply a deadly accurate pass and a remarkable catch. Another precisely executed play against which there is no adequate defense. The kind of big game-breaking play the Cowboys had made all afternoon on defense as well as offense. Perhaps the best explanation of Super Bowl XII came from Denver's Jim Turner. We were out there thinking about winning, he said, and they were out there thinking about football. The man doing all the thinking was Tom Landry, who once again delivered an entertaining lesson in winning football. In Super Bowl XII, it was a lesson on how a superbly conditioned team of eager athletes can pry open a tough, hard-hitting game and extract from it the stuff of victory. Hey, hey. 